Hey Summoners, my name is Nathan Ng and I'll be your host for the patch 12.18 rundown. Today, we're going to be covering the changes and also provide you guys with an updated tier list for all 5 roles and give you an idea of what's going to be good and what's not so good for each role this patch. Winning starts with drafting the right champions, and this video will give you an immediate advantage over other players in solo queue. Make sure to subscribe because we make meta videos like this just to ensure that you're always up to date on what's good and you definitely don't want to miss out on those. Without further ado, let's begin the patch rundown. Before we get into the actual balance changes, let's look at one thing that everyone can agree that Riot does well, the skins. We're getting the Halloween, the Harrowween, whatever you like to call it, skins this patch with the newly dubbed Fright Night line. The champions that we're seeing receive the skins are Annie, Draven, Nautilus, Renata, Trundle, and Urgot. All of them look pretty good, but I have to say to me, Urgot skin stands head and shoulders above the others. In addition to those holiday themed skins, we're also getting a new addition to the Ashen lineup with Ashen Slayer Silas, as well as a new world skin for Azir. If Azir wasn't so incredibly awful right now, I'd be pretty hyped, cause this skin is really nice. With all the new world skins coming out, expect all of the old ones along with the Conqueror skins to also make a return to the shop. Usually, after we go over the skins, we start talking about the system changes, but it seems like Riot is happy where everything is at the moment for worlds as far as systems go, or at least happy enough that they'd rather not risk any changes that could have a negative impact on the big event. Also, I just want to give a quick shout out to our coaches over at ProGuides.com. Our meta videos like this are a great way to give you a push in the right direction, but if you're super serious about climbing, you want to go check those guys out. They're all top level players who have spent years climbing the ladder, and they're ready to share everything that they've learned with you. So, if coming in years of top tier gameplay into short hour long sessions sounds like your speed, then you should really go pay them a visit. They're available 24 7, so feel free to head over at any time. Alright, with all of that out of the way, let's take a look at our updated tier list. First, we'll start off with the top laners. Melkai's little revamp blast patch caused him to really shoot up as both a top laner and support, so this patch we're seeing a little bit of a role specific balance. His damage will remain the same, but his healing is getting a decent chunk removed, going from 14 to 12% HP at max level. Overall, we still think that he's going to be plenty strong, so we're just moving him down a single level to the S tier. No matter the meta, Garen seems to be pretty much always one of the stronger picks in the top lane. His easy to execute kit does a lot of damage and allows you to bully foes of all types. That being said, he's on the lower end of his usual performance right now, so we're lowering him down to the S tier as well. Another champion that we'll be demoting to the S tier is Shen. Neither Shen nor anything he builds has been messed with recently, so the only reason for this is just a slight meta shift. He's still a really solid choice for mixing split pushing and team play. It's really hard to tell how Udyr's strength is going to be changing this patch. Riot is trying really hard to push players to build on AD while maxing Q over the current Bruiserish tank AP build with R Max. Since it's just way too hard to really predict how he can play out as a top laner, we'll just leave him where he is for now. Come back to the mid patch update next week to see how things really pan out for him. But I will say I like playing Udyr AD anyway, and I've had some pretty good results, so these buffs should be pretty crazy. Anyway, Aatrox has really picked up in popularity lately, and while most stat websites show his performance is pretty good, his actual win rate isn't all that crazy. He definitely has some really hard carrying potential if you snowball early, since he spikes so hard in the mid game. But the issue is, if you don't pop off early, he has a really tough time coming online and being useful. He's definitely a viable pick, but he just doesn't quite have the consistency that we like to see in our top 2 tiers, so we're moving him down to the A tier for now. Nasus is getting a decent buff this patch, but we won't be changing this tier list placement at the moment. The thing is, Nasus isn't in a bad spot right now at all. He's pretty middle of the pack as far as his win rate goes. Giving his hard scaling playstyle, that's probably right where he should be. You don't want to see hard scaling champions like Nasus or Kale sitting at the higher end of the spectrum. It means that they're too low risk, high reward, and they're really frustrating to have to play against since you know one mistake gives them the game. Now, even if he was weak, I think this isn't the best buff they could go with. If Nasus is dying, odds are it's not by auto attackers. Steel Caps, Frozen Heart, and his current W are plenty enough to shut down a foe that relies on autos to do their damage. The biggest issue Nasus faces is being kited, but running Flash Ghost should be enough to help with that. Let's just stop giving champions buffs that really don't need it. Meanwhile, plenty of other champions that have been unviable for months and even years remain untouched. Cho'Gath moves down to the B tier. His impact on most games is pretty average. He can be really, really beefy, especially for a frontliner. But since his CC is pretty unreliable, he just ends up being kited to death pretty easily by most comps. Since most of the meta top laners are pretty strong against high health pool foes, he ends up being outscaled by most opponents in a side lane as well. Now for the jungle, here's our list. Nocturne has really been popping off with his recent buffs. And while Riot was quick to come up with some nerfs to counter that, those nerfs are pretty mild. We think that he should easily be strong enough to be considered an S tier pick. It helps a lot that you can swap between more damage heavy assassin builds and more bruisery ones, so that way you can adapt to different comps and fill different roles. 
Rammus is one of those champions that seem to have a bit of a roller coaster as far as his win rate goes, and right now, he's on the upswing. He's doing well enough that we're moving him up to the S tier. Just like with the top lane, we can't really tell you where Udyr is going to be after these changes. He could have a lot more snowball potential with an AD build, but he could also be a lot less consistent. So for now, we'll leave him where he is, and revisit it once we have more data. With Kane getting yet another nerf, we think it's safe to say that he'll finally be demoted to the A tier. But if history has taught us anything, he's probably back to the S tier with some new cheesy build in no time. We're moving Hecarim down to the B tier. He's not even overperforming right now. Despite player sentiment claiming that he's some unstoppable ridiculous 1v9 monster, he's around or below a 50% win rate in Plan Under, and just above 51% win rate in Diamond Plus. He can definitely take over a game if he snowballs early, but it's not like he does that super consistently. We forgot to add Maokai to the jungle tier list with this new change, so now we are. He's been about a C tier on patch 12.17, but we think the buffs this patch will probably raise that to about a B. Kindred's high mastery curve makes her a pretty strong pick in high elo, but she's really hit or miss in the middle ranks. Also, in the middle and lower ranks, your teammates don't really help you get your marks. We're gonna move her down to the B tier to reflect her inconsistency. Now, here's our mid lane tier list. Zed is being moved down to the A tier. When you snowball with him, he's a definitely scary champion for squishes to deal with, but the issue we have is that in the current meta, that's just not enough to hard carry games. A lot of the OP champs in the current meta are bruisers and juggernauts from the top and jungle, and you will struggle to deal with them if they are threats that need to be popped. Trinder Bear will be moving to the A tier this patch. Really, there's a strong argument for him being S tier. He gets better and better the higher you go, so if you're plat 3 or 2 and up, he's definitely going to be in the higher tiers. Vagar is nowhere near as oppressive as he once was earlier in the season, but he has kind of been on the upswing lately, so we're moving him up to the A tier for now. The game moves at a bit of a faster pace with how important dragons are right now compared to the beginning of the season, so maybe take him as a counterpick to other scaling options where you won't be giving up a ton of early game prio. We'll be moving Talon down to the B tier. He just takes too much effort to get very minimal returns at the moment. The last mid lane adjustment that we'll be making is moving Orianna down to the C tier. Sadly, one of the most iconic mid laners, and even just champions period of all time, has been doing pretty poorly these last couple of seasons. But with how heavily valued she is in pro play, I highly doubt Wright is going to be giving her the buffs that she deserves anytime soon. Now, let's move on to the bot lane. Misfortune is so strong right now that we really think that she should still be in the OP tier after this change. But stat changes can be easy to underestimate. Look how badly Sivir got hit after her last set of changes. We thought that she'd be easily an S tier pick, but she's hanging for her life at the moment in the B tier. So this is another one where you definitely have to check back with our mid-patch update to get a sure answer. The only other ADC that we can say is as strong as Misfortune, and maybe even stronger now, is Neela. So we're moving her up to the OP tier. She's really surprised us with how well she's doing in the middle and lower elos, and she's been relatively uncontested for such a strong champion. Definitely abuse her before she catches on anymore. Ash is a strong laner, but she's been having some issues falling off compared to other carries. That's why she's so much more popular as a support now than as an ADC. The buff to her Q will help a little bit, but only enough to help her move up to the A tier. I think Riot could have been a little bit more generous here. We're moving Varus back down to the C tier. Varus doesn't really have an identity in the game at the moment. He's supposed to be a lane bully that either scales as a lethality artillery style champion or a hyper carry. But right now, he actually loses most lane matchups and neither of his builds really do anything. Jinx is doing pretty badly lately, so we're moving her down to the C tier as well. Every other hyper carry has a better laning phase, spikes faster, and even scales better compared to her. To finish things off, we have our supports. We think Malkash should still be pretty strong, so we're kicking him down just a notch to the S tier. He still has his damage and CC, which are his main selling points, but maybe that's just a little bit too optimistic, since he is a fair bit squishier now. We'll be moving Valkaz down to the S tier as well. He's still a really solid option, but given that he basically wants to do the exact same job as Zyra and Heimerdinger, but does it a little bit worse than them, we can't really have him on the same level. Being in the S tier is still really good, and if he's your cup of tea, well then go for it. Lulu has been one of the worst performing enchanters in the game for months now, with about a 50% win rate. Really, only Karma and Yumi could definitely be called worse than her, but for some reason, she's getting some random set of nerfs this patch, so we're moving her down to the C tier. It's kind of wild to see a champion doing so poorly get hit so hard. Pointing to pro play is a pretty poor excuse too. Yeah, she's been pretty popular there, but on 12.15, she had a staggering 46% win rate in 153 games. I really think that Riot needs a bit of human judgment to guide their systems rather than just leaning so heavily on flawed metrics. Thresh is getting another buff this patch, we're not going to be moving him from this spot in the C tier. Maybe in Diamond and Up, he could definitely be a B tier or even an A tier pick, but outside of that, he's just way too inconsistent. Enchanters, mages, and a couple of engaged champions just always end up providing more. Alrighty, that concludes our 12.18 patch rundown. 
Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, feel free to share your thoughts with me in the comments down below. Also, be sure to join our Discord in the description box below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as usual, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.